Does this ever happen to you? When you go to use your ratcheting tie-down straps, they're all in a jumbled up knot. Or when you're trying to wrap them up nice and neatly to put them away, they explode and you find yourself in a tangled mess. If this happens to you, you may need the Strapmaster 5000. For six painful payments of just $59.99, you too can own this revolutionary and life-changing tool. Call now. Okay, not really, but in all seriousness, I needed a way to quickly wind up my tie-down straps after I use them. See, I'm one of those super weird OCD types that loses sleep if things are messy. So when it comes to my tie-down straps, I can't just toss them into a bucket. I have to wind them all by hand and organize them nice and neat into a box. Well, doing this by hand takes forever, so I needed to come up with something that would help me do it much faster. Well, I did, and it's amazing. It works great, and it's super easy to put together. Let me show you how I built it. First off, I didn't really have anything planned or a drawing to work from. I just had an idea in my head. Usually, I come up with the idea, and then I draw it out using some CAD software like Fusion 360 to see if it'll even work. Well, I didn't do that this time. Instead, I figured the project should be simple enough to just go down to the shop and start messing around and see if I could cobble something together that might work. I started by sketching out the shape of the main paddle on some freshly planed walnut. I just freehanded this, but I probably shouldn't have because it turned out a little asymmetrical, and my eye kind of twitches a little every time I notice it. Over at the bandsaw, I nip off the excess. Yes, I know I have the wrong blade on for this, but I was far too lazy to switch it out. Then the belt sander took off the bandsaw marks, and then I could put a nice round over on the edges over at the router table. Now I need to punch a hole through the center of it for the main twister thingy to stick through. I chucked in a one inch Forstner bit and then I drilled at my mark. I was sure to not blast all the way through though. Instead, I stopped once the tip of the brad point went through so that I could drill from the other side to complete the hole. This eliminates any tear out and it keeps things real crisp. A little bit of sanding and the paddle was done and ready to deliver some spanks to some unruly children. Next up, I need to create a dowel to fit in that hole. I start by ripping down a perfectly one inch square piece of stock on the table saw. Then I can chuck in a half inch round over bit into the router and then I can take off each of the corner edges of the piece I prepared. I made sure not to do the whole thing but rather to leave a portion of it still square. This just makes things easier during this step since I'm not trying to push the whole piece past the router bit. The bandsaw takes off the half I don't need, and then I can drill a hole into one of the ends for a long screw. I drive it in a ways, and then I clip off the top half of it since I was feeling rather destructive, and this satisfied my rage. At this point, I could chuck it into my drill and sand it down just a bit until it was a perfect fit into the hole of the paddle. Now I need to make a slot in it, and for this, I chose to use my tenoning jig. I securely fastened it into place, and then I let the table saw make a few cuts to open it up. A little bit of hand sanding, and the end of the dowel looks pretty good. Next up is the handle. I drill a one inch hole at a seemingly arbitrary location on this thin flat piece. And it wasn't until I was sketching out the shape of the handle that I realized, yeah, that was a pretty dumb spot to put the hole because now I'm gonna be wasting a bunch of this wood. 
good thing I didn't have to pay for it. Instead, I found it. It was stuck to the front of one of the drawers in my neighbor's kitchen. Just a little bit of prying and it popped right off. Next up, I could use the disc sander to grind it down to the line. And then I followed that up with the belt sander to refine the shape. After that, I put on a round over onto it back at the router table. Now I could put the pieces together. I space them appropriately and then I make a mark where I need to trim down the dowel. I took care of that back at the bandsaw. And then with a little bit of glue, I could put those two pieces together. The only piece left to make was the knob. And since I don't have a lathe, I'm forced to be a little creative. I chucked the dowel back into my drill and I started to shape the end of it on the belt sander. Once I got the end rounded over pretty good, I switched to the other side of the belt sander and I began to shape the underside of the knob. It didn't take too long before I had it shaped pretty good on the sander. Then I could use some finer grit sandpaper and really get it smoothed out before I took it to its bris for the old snippity snip. Mazel tov. I countersunk a location on the end of the handle that was just big enough where my screw would sit flush. And then I drilled a large hole through the center of it. Then in the knob, I drilled a smaller hole so that the threads of the screw would really bite into that. See, the idea is that since there aren't any threads on the upper section of the screw, it'll spin freely in the handle, but not in the knob. This will let you turn the handle easily while holding firmly onto the knob. I added some paste wax to the threads of the screw and into the hole of the knob. Then, using a screwdriver, I gently sent this flat-headed beauty to his new home. So now I actually had my first chance to test this thing out. I unwound a strap and then I fit the hook of it into the slot on the end of the dowel. Then, while holding the strap flat, I could wind it right up. I was actually pretty surprised just how well it worked. How cool is that? That's awesome. <laughs> Next, I rubbed on some Danish oil to bring out the color of the walnut and to give it just a little bit of protection. I really like how simple Danish oil is to apply. You can't overdo it and it makes its way down to all the nooks and the crannies really easily. And since this thing is so awesome, I had to give it a name. So, I fired up my laser and I burned it right into the underside of the paddle. It turned out awesome. This thing really did turn out great. The black walnut is gorgeous, especially with all the sapwood to heartwood transitions. Plus, the dowel, the handle, and the little knob turned out fantastically. Not bad for not having a lathe, right? But honestly, I think the best thing about this is not how it looks, but rather how well it functions. This thing works like a champ, and it makes wrapping up all my tie-down straps super quick and easy. I know it's kind of a ridiculous little thing, but I love it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give the video a like and add a comment down below. And if you're new to the channel and you feel I've earned it, consider subscribing. I've got a ton of other videos that I'm sure you'll enjoy, as well as many more to come. And if you'd like to support my goofy endeavors, you could become a Fisher's Shop channel member. There should be a little join button on your player. From there, you can choose a contribution level that you're comfortable with, as well as enjoy the perks that come along with it. Well, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Why did I tangle this up so much? I tangled all this up for like a two second clip and now I'm going to spend about two hours undoing it all. <laughs> what are the neighbors thinking? <laughs> he just saw me. <laughs>